on to the final part of problem 3.3a. This has us doing closing journal entries. And it might be a new concept to you. I'm going to introduce it as if this is a new concept. So we'll talk a little bit about what a closing journal entry is, and then we'll just do it for this uh, NetLock security company. So a closing entry, every time a company finishes its fiscal year, June 30th, it starts a new year. And guess what? A lot of numbers have to start again at zero. Like its sales for 2014 were 499,000, or 2024, pardon me, were 499,000, right? Its sales for 2024, just looking at its security revenue, pardon me, for 2024 is $499,000. Well, we want to start a new year. And so starting the new year, what's its security revenue for 2025, fiscal June 30th, 2025? The answer is zero, right? It's got to start again at zero. You got to reset your numbers once in a while. So you're starting again from zero. And a lot of numbers in the financial statements need to get reset. Some numbers, however, do not get reset. Like when I start a new year, it makes all the sense in the world to reset revenues to zero, but I can't set like my notes payable to zero. I can't say to like the guy I owe money to, hey, sorry, it's a new year. My note payable is now zero. No, 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 that doesn't make sense. My revenues reset to zero. And so I'm going to give you the list of what we need to reset to zero. So again, closing entry. Here's the job of a closing entry. Reset, rest, no. Reset uh, uh, revenues, expenses, and dividends to zero. That's the job. That's all we have to do. We have to make those accounts go to zero. So let's do it, and I'll kind of explain as we go for this company. And we can use the adjusted trial balance. So uh, revenues, expenses, and dividends. Let's start with our revenues and expenses, like from here down. So this little boxed-in area, that's my revenues and expenses. Let's reset those amounts to zero. So how am I going to do that? Uh, let me actually move this over just so it's off out of my way. Uh, well, we do a journal entry, and the journal entry is a June 30th entry. June 30th, 2024. I, If I want revenues to go to zero, they're sitting at a credit balance of 499 To make them go to zero, I debit them. So debit security rev 499 I want all my expenses to go to zero. They're all sitting in debits. I want to make them go to zero. I credit them. I credit Salaries, expense, 321500 interest expense, 1250 uh, depreciation expense, 21400 uh, supplies expense, 4700 uh repairs expense 17000 uh insurance expense 9333 rent expense 60 grand Income tax expense seven grand. So summing these all up, what you're going to find is they don't balance, and and rev in this case the debits are higher than the credit. So let's figure out how far we're off. Um, Four ninety nine on the left. Actually, let's just total the right. So three twenty one five plus twelve fifty plus twenty one four plus 4,700, plus 17,000, plus 93,33, plus 60, plus 7. 442, 183. So 442, 183. So what am I missing here? What's the difference? 499, 000. 
minus 442, 183. I'm off by 56, uh, 187. 56, one, or 56, 817, pardon me. 56, 817. So I got to put a number in here of 56, 817 just to make it bounce. Like this isn't a good journal entry, right? To have debits not equal credits breaks all the rules of journal entries. So I need to fill in 56, 817 on the right hand side. Now I'm going to tell you what to do. And in one minute from now, I'll tell you why we're doing it. But just right now, go with me. Credit or debit, if we're off by a debit, you know, whatever number you're filling in here, when you've zeroed out your revenues and expenses, put it to retained earnings. Whatever that number is, plug it through retained earnings. We'll also zero our dividends. So dividends were sitting there as a debit of $10,000. We want to make it go to zero. So I got to credit dividends, $10,000 to make them go to zero. And in this case, we'll debit our retained earnings to sort of balance that out. $10,000. And there we have our closing entries. Date that one as well. Uh, those are our closing entries. So that's it. We've answered the question. But you might be saying, why are we doing this again? Well, the first reason is we want to reset revenues, expenses, and dividends to zero, and we've done that. But why is retained earnings our balancing account? Well, to, to figure that out, I actually want to take a look at our financial statements. And I want to go over to our statement of changes in equity. So here we have net lock security statement of changes in equity, and specifically the retained earnings column. We said retained earnings started at 87000 It went up by 56817 because of the net income. Net income made this go up by 56,817. Well, if we want to make anything happen in accounting, we need journal entries. And you can see we've made retained earnings go up by 56,817 because of the revenues and expenses, because of the net income. So this is the journal entry that captures this line on our statement of changes in equity. Retained earnings goes up by 56,817 because of the net income and it goes down by $10,000 because of the dividends. Well, to make retained earnings go up, it's a shareholder's equity account. To make it go up, you credit it. To make retained earnings go down, you debit it. And we debited it $10,000 because of the dividends. So this closing entry is really tracking what's happening here in our statement of changes in equity. It's saying, hey, our retained earnings changed. We got to do a journal entry to make it so. This is the journal entry that makes it happen. So there we are, our closing entry. If you didn't quite follow why we did it, I think it's okay. Just remember, you're going to reset revenues, expenses, and dividends to zero, and you're going to do it through your retained earnings. There are a million different ways to do this and to line this up. What I'm telling you is absolutely right. What you learn in a different classroom might, might be slightly different. We're all going to end up in the exact same place. I like the way I've done it, obviously, that's why I'm showing you this way, uh, but your prof might do it slightly differently in your class, but they're going to end up in the exact same place as I do, and this is a good and totally acceptable way of doing a closing journal entry. Okay, if you've made it to the end of this long video series, I hope you're here because it's useful to you, and for goodness sakes, if it's useful to you, please do me the favor of giving me the old thumbs up. Please pass this along to your friend. Tell your profs you found these videos. Tell them that, that it's useful. Go back and like all my other videos. <laughs> well, you don't have to do that. But any uh, thumbs up or likes I can get, I really do appreciate. And again, it's just to tell YouTube that I'm doing good work here. And uh, it's a nice pat on the back for me too. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate your being here and being a supporter of this channel. That's all for this video. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.